Hey everyone, I am so excited to have the privilege to share with you tonight. Even though I would much prefer to be here with you on a Friday, I still count it as such an honor to be able to share through technology with you. Uh, so my name's Anna, I'm the Young Adults Pastor here at New Life and um, I'm really excited for what God's put on my heart and the opportunity it is to be able to uh, encourage you in your faith and maybe put another log on the fire that might be dwindling at the moment. But I hope and pray that tonight Tonight is an encouragement and inspiration to you. So we have had such a crazy couple of months. I know everyone is saying it. Um, but for me, I found myself really missing strange things. So for me, I missed having routine in my life. I missed waking up and getting ready and going for work. Maybe you've missed waking up and getting ready and going to school, said no one ever, but maybe you have. And um, the thing is I needed to put some kind of routine in my life that meant that I would actually get out of my pajamas in the morning. So. I decided to go for a walk every morning. And before you think that I'm an exercise freak, because trust me, most mornings it was a stroll, um, I actually was able to find the best walking route ever. And this is the best walking route because it has all these different sections. So at the beginning, because I need to be entertained, uh, at the beginning, we have the house section. And so I'm walking down the street, looking at all of the houses, wondering which ones I want to live in, wondering why the heck you would paint your house lime green and who would live there, um, and just wondering who these people are and what they're doing. Anyway, the next section that I get into is the beach section. So there's a path that's right next to the beach and I'm able to see the waves and check out the swell and wonder what the wind is doing down on the beach. And it's just beautiful to be able to see the ocean. Then when I walk through there into the park, so the park is cool because all the oldies come to the park in the morning and we're talking like 6.30, 7 a.m. and they're there with their walkers goals um, and they're meeting their old friends and they're having a coffee or going for a swim and I'm just like go you guys I want to be like you when I grow up um, so the park is really happening um, and then I kid you not after the park it loops around through the forest and so I've got houses beach park and now forest out of nowhere and um, that forest actually loops you back into the park and, um, and this one day in particular, it was about two weeks ago now actually, I was walking in the park and um, I was just doing my thing, had my audio book in and I saw this girl in the park and she was running but that kind of really awkward, kind of embarrassing run where it was like half run, half dance, half frolic and you kind of just catch yourself judging her and just being like, that is so embarrassing, like, oh, don't be like that. Um, and so she was there and she's kind of been crazy and wild and my scowl and judgment kind of then transforms into like a little bit of jealousy and a little bit of a smile because I love the freedom that she has and how she does not care in the world what people are thinking. And so I was back in the beach section by now and I was thinking about her and thinking about you know, the, the guts that it takes to just literally run like a crazy person with her hands up and running around. And I was just thinking and dwelling on her, just like, oh, that's cool. And then it kind of hit me. This girl was dancing in the park and running around with such freedom. And only, I only just realised that for the first time in about 10 weeks, the park was not completely enclosed by two and a half metre fluorescent orange fences. The park every day that I had walked past, like with a metre next to me and these sky high block bright orange fences had now disappeared and I didn't even notice. I'd walked through the park, around the forest, back through the park and the only reason that I was thinking about it, the only reason that it caught my eye and my attention was because this girl was being psycho in the park. But why wouldn't she? She is so excited that for the first time we actually have the freedom to run around, frolic and dance and jump with joy because the park is open. 
What a crazy time to be alive. And I'm not here to sell you on an awesome walk that I've found because it's my walk. Um, and I'm not here to tell you to run around like a crazy person in the park. But it did make me wonder, and I wonder if you're thinking the same thing, how often in my life am I so zoned out, so in my own world, in my own zone and listening to books or whatever, that I don't even realise what's happening around me? How often do I miss such awesome opportunities, the wide open spaces in life, the fun times to be able to be wild and free, how often do I just miss that opportunity completely? Because I don't have the eyes to see it. Tonight, Jason's asked me to talk on more courage. And it's such an awesome topic because I think all of us want more courage. I wanted more courage to be able to dance like that girl in the park and make a fool of myself. Perhaps you're wanting more courage to ask that boy or that girl out that you've had love heart eyes for the forever. Perhaps you're wanting to have more courage to apply for that part-time job or more courage to take the shot in sport or more courage to perform a monologue in drama, more courage to maybe go deeper in your relationship with Christ, maybe more courage to be able to share with your friends at school what you love about youth. Whatever it is, I think courage is something that we always want more of. And not only do we want courage to be able to step out in faith, I hope that we're inspired tonight to have the eyes to see the opportunity to then have the courage to step into. So for our inspiration and our story from the Bible tonight, we're going to the book of Acts. And if you're anything like me, sometimes I've actually skipped over the book of Acts because it's sandwiched between the Gospels, where Jesus is telling these like crazy stories that kind of don't make sense, but then are strangely profound. Um, and it's sandwiched between the Gospels and then the letters of Paul. And Paul is encouraging the church uh, as the early church forms and how to have their hearts and their souls and their minds and their actions more in line with the character and the nature of God. So Acts is kind of sometimes, well, at least for me, kind of fallen by the wayside of those two awesome bookends. Um, but can I tell you, Acts is actually wild. Acts is such a roller coaster of this incredible message of the gospel reaching the world for the first time. And for me, I think about this team that are launching like this, this new drop of the gospel. It hasn't hit the world yet. The, the news of Jesus Christ has not actually spread yet. And these guys called the apostles they're the ones who are on the front foot of it. They're on the launch team and they get to have the joy and the roller coaster and the challenge of what it means to bring the good news into a place that maybe doesn't even want to hear it. So they definitely needed courage. And tonight we're going to look at a guy called Stephen. And his story is one of such inspiration. And I would love for us to glean from him how we can too be filled with courage, filled with the Holy Spirit, to be able to speak to people who maybe don't want to hear the good news of the gospel and do it in such a way that makes them believe and have faith themselves. So we find ourselves in chapter six of the book of Acts. And Stephen is doing something that he does best, which is preaching the Word of God. And before you think that, oh, well, that's fine for Stephen and not for me, um, the reason that Stephen is sharing so much of the gospel and preaching to people who will hear it is because he has such a relationship with Christ, such a belief in the good news. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has transformed his life and he cannot keep it in. He is so excited to be able to share it with anyone who will hear. And so he is filled with the Holy Spirit. In chapter 6, it says that he has power and grace and that he has such wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit. That is what people hear when they listen to the words of Stephen. And this, this wisdom, this power, this grace, um, this courage is not just mustered up out of Stephen's ability to be a good speaker. I can imagine that Stephen was actually sweating bullets every single time he stood up to share the gospel. But he did it 
because out of an intimate relationship that he had with Christ, he couldn't keep it in. He didn't want to actually rob the people around him from the incredible news that changed his life. And for me, I want that kind of relationship with Christ where I can't help but slip it into conversations. I can't help but mention a a really cool message that I heard or watched on YouTube or a worship song that I have just been loving. I I, want to be in the place where um, I can't help but slip it into the conversations that I'm having just with my friends, my family or whoever, uh, the person at the coffee shop, whatever. So I love that inspiration that Stephen actually has courage and power and uh, grace and wisdom because of his relationship, his infilling of the Holy Spirit, which comes out of that intimate place. So Stephen, he's preaching the word and he is preaching it to people who, trust me, don't want to hear it. He's probably standing there and recognizing in the crowd that there's the the guys sitting at the back and they're murmuring to one another and they recognize that what he's saying is powerful, but they're afraid of it. They're afraid because it's threatening their worldview, their religious order that they have in place. They're scared They recognize the power of it and they're scared of that. And so what happens to Stephen is he is faithful. He is filled with courage. He is the one who sees the opportunity and he goes for it. He's the one who's dancing wildly in the park and people are watching, metaphorically, of course. Um, But he is the one who has stepped out in courage He's been filled with the Holy Spirit. And even though he knows that there's people there who don't want to hear it and will probably force some really bad consequences going forward, he says, you know what? God, I trust you enough. This has changed my life enough. I believe in this enough in order to have the courage to speak it out regardless of what happens. You know, some pretty crazy things happen to Stephen as a consequence, Um, things that are still happening around our world. It might not be you and I's reality by the grace of God, but so many people in our world actually have consequence for when they share the gospel, when they open their mouths and talk about Christ. But for you and I, I wonder what that can look like in our lives. Can we have the kind of relationship with God where we are filled with the Holy Spirit not only to see opportunity arise, but then have the courage to step into it and to speak with such power, grace, and wisdom. There's a verse in uh, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 that says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I think freedom and courage go hand in hand. That's what I saw with our girl who was dancing like a crazy person in the park. She had the courage to do it and the freedom to let loose. Where the spirit of the Lord is, you are not entrapped by other people's opinions. You're not ensnagged by uh, the what ifs of your reputation. You are actually free to speak about the things that have changed your life. And I want that for you and I. I want that, that we will speak with such boldness and such courage because we have a relationship with Christ that cannot be hidden. Can I pray for you and I that we will be filled with that kind of courage, that kind of opportunity and freedom? Lord God and Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you give us everything we need to be able to step out into the opportunities that you've placed around us. And God, I pray tonight that you will just open our eyes to the opportunities that are around us, that we will not walk through this life and not even notice when things change around us, not even notice the big fences that may have been there that are now disappeared, God. I pray that we'll see the opportunity of the wide open spaces and we will have the courage to be able to step out in such boldness, that we will be filled afresh with your Holy Spirit, so that we have the right words to say. God, I pray that we will not be fearful of what might come against us. The idea that people might mutter and people might say things behind our backs, God, will that not deter us from having the courage to be able to speak about the relationship that we have with you? 
And Lord God, I just pray for those who are watching right now who think that that relationship with you is such a foreign thought. Lord God, I pray that they might meet you here tonight, that they will experience your love and that they will have your Holy Spirit fill them, that they will know the freedom that is in you. Lord God, we're excited for what you've placed around us and how you can use us to further your kingdom and to bring the good news. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, what an amazing word we heard from Pastor Anna tonight. It was awesome. I hope that you uh, got some gold out of that. But we just don't want you to have a message and then get see no other fruit from it. So right now, in the comments section, your small groups will be popping up. That link is going to only be up there for five minutes. So you've got to hit that link, join your small group, make sure you chat about the message, talk about how your weeks are. Thank you so much for joining in again. And we can't wait to do it all again next Friday. But in the meantime, make sure you've heard our latest song that we've dropped or maybe one of our other old songs. And, you know, make sure you're engaging on our online at Source, which is YouTube. And we will see you next Friday. Bye.